Hello everyone, my name is Lai Suo Su. I am from Carnegie Mellon University working with Professor Yi Xiaoye. Today, I'm going to introduce my research topic on tenoring electrode electronite interfaces in lithium ion batteries using molecularly engineered functional polymers. For those who are not familiar with lithium ion batteries, I'm going to give a quick introduction first. Lithium ion batteries is composed by cathode, anode, and electrolyte in the middle. During charging, lithium ions and electrons move from cathode to anode. During discharging, they from, move from anode to cathode. The electron can only move through out circuit because electrolyte is electron insulating. DOE has launched a program called Battery 500 for developing battery technology. Their goals are to develop batteries with energy over 500 watt hours per kilogram, and the batteries should be cycled over 1,000 times. To reach these goals, we need to have a principal understanding on the battery materials. So this figure shows the energy status of different battery materials, including anode, cathode, and electrolyte. If the energy status of the anode is higher than the normal of the electrolyte, the electrolyte will be reduced. If the homo of the electrolyte is higher than in the energy status of the cathode, the electrolyte will be oxidized. And therefore, we need to pick these electrodes, these materials very carefully to ensure that they match with each other. This figure shows the computed electrochemical stable window of different electro electrolyte solvent and salts. Many experimental evidence has shown that the electrolyte could be reduced on the anode side and oxidized on the cathode side and forms a subproduct called electrode electrolyte interfaces on the surface of the electrode. The formation of this EI consumes limited lithium ion sources and leads to capacity degradation. Additionally, this EI is unstable at high temperature and during cycling, which can cause fires and some safety concerns. To solve these problems, one way is to, to make an artificial coatings to engineer the surface of battery electrode to protect the electrode from electrolyte. Current surface engineering techniques can be allocated into four categories based on technique applied and the final synthesized materials. Inorganic material has been widely studied and they improved the cycling stability of battery material. However, the, most of the inorganic coatings have poor lithium ion conductivity and leads to poor red performance of the battery material. In comparison, organic coatings has a superior lithium ion conductivity compared to inorganic coatings and therefore have the opportunity to improve red performance and cycling stability simultaneously. However, most of the existing studies focus only on red chemistry techniques, which will introduce a non-uniform coating on the surface of battery electrode, making some portion of the electrode unprotected by the coating agent. Our group developed a technique called chemical vapor deposition polymerization technique in 2018, and we applied this technique and published the first paper in this field. So this picture shows the two reactors in our lab. The left-hand side is an ICVD, which is designed to synthesize insulating polymer. And the right-hand side is the OCVD, which is designed to synthesize an in conducting polymers. During the CVD process, the monomer and the initiator are introduced into a vacuum chamber with controllable flow rate. The, most, the main reaction are happened in this vacuum chamber. When the initiator encounters high temperature filament, it breaks down and generates radicals. These radicals can attach the vinyl bond and generate new radicals, which will trigger a chain polymerization. By controlling the flow rate, the chamber pressure, the substrate temperature, and so on, we can control the coating thickness and our substrate. The advantages of this technique, including the purity, conformity, durability, chemical diversity, and scalability. The CVD techniques can synthesize very uniform coatings on the surface of complex structures. 
this cross-section SEM image showed that a 100 nanometer PDVB coating on the surface of silicon trench, we can see the coating is very uniform along the wall of the silicon trench. These three TM images show uh, three different polymers that we started in our research that can be uniformly coated on the surface of medium cobalt oxide particles. And this cross-section and EDX elemental mapping shows that the sulfur element distribution, which is very uniform across the cross-section of the electrode, suggesting that the polymer is uniformly coated on the, surf on the core electrode rather than only on the surface. We found that selecting the red polymer is very important to the performance of the lithium cobalt oxide electrode. For example, this figure shows the red performance of different lithium cobalt oxide. The x-axis here is the C-red, the y-axis here is the capacity. Compared to the pristine non-coated lithium cobalt oxide, the pillar coated lithium cobalt oxide shows a much better red performance. The 5C and the 10C capacities are almost doubled by the pillar coating. In comparison, the PDVB has almost no effect, and then the core polymer reduces the capacity and high rate. The right figure here shows the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy of the three different of the four different electrodes. Compared to the pristine lithium cobalt oxide, the P dot coating lithium cobalt oxide shows the smallest impedance. The PDVB has almost no effect, and the core polymer increased the overall impedance. This result matches well with the red performance as we showing in this left figure. To understand the different red performance after the polymer coatings, we need to understand how lithium ions transport from electrolyte to electrodes, which includes five steps, including desorption process, lithium ion transport through SCI, and the electron transport from current connector to the surface of lithium cobalt oxide, and then the combination between electron and the lithium ions. And finally, the transport of lithium ion electron pairs into the bulk of lithium cobalt oxide. By engineering the surface of lithium cobalt oxide, we can change the step one, step two, step three, and step four of this process, and therefore affect the red performance. We conduct the DFT calculation to study the interaction between lithium ions and the different polymers. This is helped by Mitchell in NIST. And we find that the lithium ions have the smallest binding energy with the pilot. Additionally, the lithium ions have the maximum binding locations in the pilot compared to the other two polymers. So this small binding energy and a sufficient binding site for lithium ions make pilot a good lithium ion conductor compared to the other two polymers. So the improved lithium ion and the electron transport by the pilot can further affect the current homogeneity in the lithium cobalt oxide electrode during cycling. For example, this two figure shows the counterplot of the phase transition of lithium cobalt oxide during the cycling process. This experiment is done in APS 6 BMA. And for the pilot coating of lithium cobalt oxide, we can see that the core H1 phase is transferred to H2 phase during the cycling process. In comparison, some of the H1 phase stays remains the same during the cycling process. This suggests that some pristine lithium oxide are inactive. To understand this process, we draw a two schematic here. And we know that the pilot provides fast transport channels for both electrons and lithium ions. Therefore, some region really have a poor content with electrolyte or car carbon blank. Still remains active during the cycling process. While from the pristine non-coated lithium oxide, this region will be inactive. Therefore, the current homogeneity is improved by the pilot coating. This can further alleviate the mechanical fatigue of lithium cobalt oxide particles during cycling. So the different polymer coatings also have a different effects on the cycling synthesis 
and shown in this figure. So for the pristine lithium carboxide, the capacity decreases very fast because we cycle the battery from 3.0 to 4.5 volts. By applying a period coating, we largely improve the cycling stability. For example, when we applied a 16 nanometer thick period coating, the cycle number is increased to 550 cycles, which is over 70 times of improvement. We also test the cycling stability of lithium cobalt side electrode and different C rate. For example, this is a experimental result and 5C. We can see that the period coating also largely improved the cycling stability and the high C rate. And we also compared our result with existing data in the literature that cycled the lithium cobalt to 4.5 volts. And we can see that the capacity fitting rate increase with the decrease of the primary particle size and our result matches well with this trend. With a peer coating, we can largely reduce the capacity failing rate. To understand this improved performance, cycling performance by the peer coating, we further conduct an inoperando synchron small angle X-ray scattering, which is conducted in APS 9 ITC. This figure shows an electrochemical cycling performance of a pristine lithium oxide and a pure coating lithium oxide. And we can see here that the pristine lithium oxide decreases very fast during the cycling test, while the pure coated lithium oxide remains pretty stable during the cycling. In this figure, we show the relative intensity of the X-ray versus the scan vector, and we can see a few peaks in the figures here. This peak, these peaks represent the new features formed during the cycling process, which could be CI formation and the surface deterioration and so on. And we found that the pillar coating can largely inhibit the increase of these peaks, suggesting that the pillar inhibit the side reactions inside the lithium batteries during the cycling test. We also studied the interaction between different polymers and the lithium cobalt surface using an XPS and a DFT calculation. So we find that the P dot can form chemical bonds with the cobalt, while the PDB can only interact with the lithium cobalt through one of our interactions. And showing in the XPS data that the binding energy of the cobalt is increased by the P dot coating, while it's not changed by the other two polymer coatings. And here we can clearly see the electron density change in the E dot after being coated on the lithium quoxide. But there's only one of one action between the DVB and the lithium quoxide. So this bond formation can stabilize the cobalt. And we find from our ICP MS data that the cobalt dissolution is reduced from 0.27% to 0.08%. Uh, here is a quick summary of the improved cycling performance by the pilot coating. So first, the pilot can form, can bond with the hydrogen fluoride, which will reduce this hydrogen fluoride in the electrolyte. Secondly, the pilot will form chemical bond with the cobalt, which is stabilizing the surface cobalt element. Thirdly, the pilot provides fast transport channels for electrons and lithium ion. And lastly, the p dot can increase the current homogeneity in the electrode, which will reduce the mechanical fatigue of the lithium oxide during cycling. Based on this result, we provide some rules for selecting and designing polymers for engineering battery electrodes. So this polymer should provide fast transport channels for lithium ions in the electron, should form chemical bonds with the transition metal, and should have functional groups to sequester hydrogen fluoride. And finally, it should be stable itself to be compatible with emerging set of art cathode materials. In a quick summary, we fill the gap in current surface engineering te techniques for battery materials using these CVD polymerization techniques. And we find that selecting the right polymer is very important to the performance of the battery materials. And thirdly, we conduct a lot of mechanisms to uncover the mechanisms to understand this improved performance. Lastly, we proposed 
a few rules for selecting the designing polymers in the battery applications. I would like to thank my funding agencies and the material conservation facilities and the fair in CMU. I would also like to thank my team members and my collaborators in NIST and APS. And thanks for your time.